Hello everyone and welcome to Lost in the Real. Today I'm going to be reviewing the new anime film The Deer King, which has been billed as a sweeping epic fantasy. But does it live up to that description? Let's talk about it. The Deer King is directed by Masashi Ando and Masayuki Miyagi, based upon the novel series written by Nohoko Uihashi. In the aftermath of a brutal war, former soldier Van toils in a mind controlled by the ruling empire. One day his solitary existence is upended when a pack of wild dogs carrying a deadly and incurable disease attack, leaving only Van and a young girl named Yuna as survivors. Finally free, the pair seek out a simple existence in the countryside, but are pursued by nefarious forces. Intent on protecting Yuna at all costs, Van must uncover the true cause of the plague ravaging the kingdom and its possible cure. When I first heard about The Deer King when it premiered last year at the Annecy International Film Festival, it immediately soared to the top of my most anticipated animated movies list. It is helmed by the assistant director of Spirited Away and the animation director of that film, as well as Princess Mononoke, Your Name, and Paprika, which are, in my opinion, some of the finest anime features of all time. And the fact that it was also an epic fantasy just revved up my anticipation even more. So, what is the verdict? Although it is beautiful to look at, as you would expect from the talent involved, I couldn't help but be disappointed by the Deer King's mediocre at best script. The feature is surely an ambitious one. The screenwriter Taku Kishimoto has been tasked with explaining the politics, customs, and culture of a complicated and vast warring world, all of which are extremely integral to the plot of the film. And while Kishimoto does what he can to bring this world to life, it seems as if it all was in vain. There is just so much exposition in this movie, including a ham-fisted text at the beginning, disclosing as much history as possible before the story even begins, that even an hour into the movie, we are being bombarded with more explanatory information. And even as the credits rolled, I felt as if I understood this universe well enough, but not as if I had ever been transported to it. It also felt to me as if the Deer King's screenplay was just checking off plot points to get through, rather than letting scenes have a moment to breathe and be fleshed out. For example, there is a part of the movie where our protagonist and his traveling mates are traversing through a foggy forest, only to be attacked by warriors on giant stilts. This had the potential to be a grand action set piece, but they fly through it so quickly, never explaining who these attackers are, and just as quickly as it began, we're on to the next story beat. Important supporting characters are also treated this way. A female tracker and a physician who is trying to find a cure for this horrible disease almost instantly and all too conveniently join our hero Van on his journey. We have some breadcrumbs of backstory for these characters that could have led to some compelling drama later on in the film, but it all ends up leading nowhere. <laughs> there are also other interesting characters who pop up who could have added to the weight of the story, but they are either forgotten or just used as a pawn to move the story along. It's a real shame the screenplay is so flawed because you can tell so much thought and care was put into the world building, but it just never came together for me, unfortunately. My last main issue is a big one for me, but might not be at all for others. I could not help but constantly compare this film to Princess Mononoke because of how similar they feel, which does make sense because Ando did work on that project. From characters riding around on Deerback to the cursed arm and the giant wolves slash dogs, all the way down to the animation style, the Deer King feels as if it could be a spiritual successor of Mononoke. But when you think of the magic, epic scope, powerful themes, and captivating characters of Miyazaki's masterpiece, 
this just pales in comparison. There is still so much to appreciate in Ando and Miyagi's film, however. Number one being that the animation is absolutely breathtaking. Although I watched this on a screener at home, I was yearning during the entire runtime that I was experiencing every intricate and dazzling frame up on a theater screen. I also really fell for our stoic lead character Van and his adorable adopted daughter Yuna. Every moment that these two shared screen time together, the Deer King really came alive and its heart finally started beating. The bond that they share with one another that is slowly cultivated throughout is what gives this movie the emotional power that it sorely needed. And to me, what ultimately saves it from being a total misfire. So I will be giving The Deer King 2.75 clovers out of five. Gorgeous animation and a compelling lead duo aside, this anime feature from two heavyweights in the medium is unfortunately held back by a screenplay more concerned with hitting important plot points than creating a transporting and gripping narrative. For me, this is definitely one of the most disappointing films of the year so far. Thank you so much for watching Lost in the Real. What were your thoughts on The Deer King? Did it live up to your expectations, or were you let down like I was? Sound off in the comment section down below. And until next time, my friends, take care.